welcome to the first um, paint along craft program. Today we're going to be doing a um, chevron painting and what I like to do in the end result hopefully should look like this and you do this with some basic supplies, a um, blank piece of paper, washi tape, um, paint, paintbrush, so how we like to put the washi tape is to have line there and there, three lines going straight down the paper, and then just various chevron markings, and I will start marking the paper. What I have on the table is a plastic tablecloth, because I tend to get messy with tape. You can also use you know, newspaper, old paper, we're not fancy. But what I do is figure out about the center of the paper, middle of the paper, pull off a piece of the washi tape, and then put it in a, helps if you don't let go of it. Um, what we do is uh, make sure the paper is straight, and then put it on in a straight line on the center of the paper, and then I like to make sure it's taped down to the tablecloth or the paper because that way it won't go anywhere and it makes it easier to paint. And then you just do the other two um, straight lines down the middle of the paper. You do, and again, this paper tape wants to get away, it does that. And then you just want to make sure it's fairly straight. And there we go. And then one more for the center. And for the rest of the paper, I just, um, I like to make sure that the chevrons are going, um, I like to start on one side and have them go one way, and then you can just do the um, rest from there. So, and I do, I just, I like to start at the top, and that way you near the top, and you can always add or change, and I like to get about an inch. I don't use a ruler. Again, we're not fancy. The type of paper I use, uh, mixed media paper, they do just sell it at like, you know, your big chain stores. And generally, you just want to make sure that the paper is, it's set up so that you can do, you know, acrylic paint. And you can get very nice paper. You know, you can be like me and be like, oh, you know, this is going to be a fun little experiment. And you know, I'm, I don't need anything really fancy. The washi tape I like to use, it's a little skinnier. It's maybe half an inch wide. Um, that for me gets the best results. You get enough paint and you get enough contrast between the paint and the white paper. And I like to make sure that um, you do have kind of the same starting point from one side to the other so it's not unbalanced and I like to get the main grid set up um, what it does is that way you have a nice grid and usually you can tell if you need to put little extra pieces um, at the very top and at the bottom and so for me what I like to do on this um, we've got the whole grid set up and what I like is what well, the plan today is to go from red fade into orange and then into yellow so uh, today we're going to get out, make sure the paint is well mixed and the um, palette is clean. You can use a uh, palette, you can use a paper plate, kind of whatever you, whatever you have available. We're not, you know, really fancy. Um, this is a fun exercise um, and I usually try not to get a huge amount, I don't know what you can see, but I like, and I also like to use a brush that has um, a broader tip. Um, that way you can still, you can get a lot of paint, but you can still um, have some control. You're not putting a whole lot of paint onto um, the canvas. And then we're just gonna start at the bottom and use um, broad, just paint straight across. And I always, Initially, it's going to look like you're not putting much paint on. I like to make sure that 
what I'm doing initially is getting both, getting just a solid first layer on them. We can go over and um, paint over to get the color and that you want. And this acrylic paint actually does tend to dry fairly quickly, you know, which is good. Um, so you can go back and add so that it gets a very solid um, layer of red. It's clear what color it is. It's a solid, it's very solid. Um, if you want to experiment with different painting techniques, that's fine. Um, but I just, I like to make sure that I have a decent amount of paint on the brush and you just need enough to cover the end. Um, so if you have too much, you can just uh, use it over in the next square. And I start from, I go from one end to the other so that the paint does have time to dry because otherwise it does tend to get, um, it tends to want to smudge and do, you leave weird little messed up areas on the paper and then, you know, that's not fun. So I don't like that. I imagine other people don't like that either. Okay, and all right, I think that looks, let me, Make sure this very edge gets all the paint that it deserves without leaving extra paint. Okay, and have I made sure that everything is happily painted in? Yes. Okay, so now I'm ready to go to the next stage and um, make sure you don't open the can of paint over your painting because Sometimes, like I did, it wants to leave little specks of paint, which, you know, it's not an emergency, but see, since this is a very fluorescent orange, I'm going to add, I'm gonna put it in the red, and then we're just gonna mix that together so it takes some of the, um, you know, fluorescent away. And it's just very easy. I had a little bit of red paint. This is probably, probably just about two-thirds um, orange paint and then a little bit of red, a couple drops worth of red. Um, it's not exact, but as you can see, I have mixed it up and it is now a non-fluorescent. Um, I was going to tell you it's a non-fluorescent yellow, but it's actually a very nice orange and so again we're going to do the same thing and I do have a lot of paint on my brush but that's okay what we can do is um, you can do a quick layer over several of the chevrons and then just spread that out and usually over two and then you can take the excess paint away from any of the areas that you've painted and just use the brush calmly over this area and you just use up, um, press down as opposed to just using the tip, you would use more of the brush onto the paper and that way you can use that up. I'm gonna do the second row of orange. I do have a jar of water. Um, if you are just going to have an orange that you like straight out of the bottle, which is great, uh, you can rinse your brush between um, that way you're not getting any extra color you're not getting red in the orange squares and now I'm, we're ready to go back to the second row of orange to cover the whole um, to cover the whole area without having excess you know, a lot of excess paint I'm going over to keep any of that from you know, staying in one place so you have a smooth layer of paint for the finished product. Okay, I am going to make sure that I have, I'm going to go back over the other ones, make sure that I haven't um, gotten a nice orange color. And then 
Um, make sure that I haven't left any blank spots. Sometimes there's a line of paint, of excess paint. If you've, that happens to everybody when you initially start, you just smooth that out so that there's an even coat of paint. All right, and then nice happy orange color. It's a little extra. Fill in that little blob there. There's a little extra there. And all right, and next we will do the yellow. We are now ready to do the last set, the last color for our painting, which is yellow. Um, let's say I feel the need to shake up the paint so that it's, to make sure that it's appropriately mixed and you get good solid color. So I'm gonna put out a little bit and that should, that should be plenty for our purposes today. Let's get a little bit of paint on the brush and then just use very solid strokes and you can do touch ups after you've finished one side. It's one last set of strokes across the paper. Make sure that everything is color, full, everything is painted, and that there aren't any missed spots, and that there is an even application of the paint. I like to have a good solid color, a good second coat, because it, you, that way you make sure you are covering everything and you get a very bright, true color for the paint. Okay, and I am about done.